So the aim today is uh, to give a deep dive into Nux3, specifically what happens when you type yarn Nuxy dev. Because you know what you see, you see there's a Nux CLI, you have uh, got a, uh, a server that starts, Vite warms up, there's a Vite server, uh, Nitro is built. Uh, and then if you actually just go to your, uh, to your browser, you can actually see uh, what you've just started. So there's Nux server, you can then develop and code in peace. But what happens under the hood to make that possible? Um, and I'll be as quick as I can, but save up all the questions you might have. Um, this you might be interested if you just want to know what's happening, but um, I really hope that as I show you what is going on under the hood, you might um, spot the opportunity to improve things, make them better. Or uh, if the next time you encounter something that isn't working in your Nuxt app, you, you'll know where to, to dive in. So we're going to start in uh, Nuxy itself. Um, so we have this main function, which is the starting point whenever you run a Nuxy command. And all this does is pass your arguments and figure out what command to run. Uh, it then picks the command uh, from an array and passes all the passed arguments to that command. So you can see the different commands that Nuxy has here. Um, and they're all lazy loaded in different chunks when we build Nuxy into a binary. Um, so that means only the code that you need uh, to process the command you're doing is loaded. So here we're interested in the dev command. So if we open up the dev command, we have it wrapped in this nice type helper called define nuxt command, which just allows us to add some metadata. So if you if you type nuxy help, it will tell you what you can run and uh, what the, 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 the command's uh, arguments might be. But all that happens when you run nuxy dev is this invoke function. So that's what we're going to dive into. The first thing that Jan Nuxy dev does is create a server. Um, out of the box, it creates a server. Uh, that's, by the way, why you can't configure your server port uh, and options in your Nuxt config file, as you might have done in Nuxt 2. It's because the server happens far before we even pass that file. It happens straight away. You can configure all of that with um, command line arguments or with, uh, with environment variables as well. The thing we use to create that server um, is from list then. A list then is a package that we've released separately and put in the unjs GitHub organization. Um, like many of the packages that I'm going to talk about today, um, packages in the unjs organization, we have produced, the Nux team have produced as we've been writing uh, and coding, um, but they're really meant for everybody. Uh, the aim is it's universal JavaScript, that, hence unjs. So not just for Nuxt um, and not just for Node either. Um, everything there should work in the browser as well, or in Cloudflow Workers, or in Dino. The concept is you're able to, for example, in this case, have an HTTP server that doesn't need to be run in a node environment. And that's the server that we use, um, that we start when we first start your Nuxy dev command. Technically, this probably could be run uh, in your browser, but that's not how we run it uh, at the moment. Uh, we run it in the command line. And once that server is up and running, then we figure out where the Nuxt uh, instance is going to be. It's either going to be the directory we're running the command in, or if you've passed an argument, then we're going to load it from there. And then we pull in these two crucial commands, load and build Nuxt from uh, Nuxt kit itself. This helper function just returns uh, Nuxt kit, but does so resolved not from where Nuxy is, but from your project itself. Um, now, Nuxt kit is basically an SDK, a d development kit for Nuxt. It handles communicating with Nuxt. So there are lots of things that you can do uh, in kit. So you can add auto imports or server middleware templates. You can configure Webpack or Vite, or um, you can handle things like adding additional modules. You can figure out whether you're running a Nuxt 2, 3 environment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the point is that all of those are available to you in a consistent interface that works whatever version of Nuxt you're working with. So it's Nuxt 2 or Nuxt 3, it doesn't matter. Um, you can run the same command and it should just work. So in this particular case, we pull in load and build Nuxt from kit. Now, if we pull load Nuxt in from kit, um, you'll see that what we end up with is um, this function here. So what we're going to do first is we look for Nuxt 3, Nuxt Edge, or Nuxt. Uh, and whichever one we have, we know what version it is now. So if it's Nux3, well, it's, uh, it's version 3, and we can handle it this way. It's version 2, we handle it 
this way instead. Um, so this should work whether or not you have Nux, uh, three or Nux bridge. Um, and then we pull, in the case of Nux three, we pull Nux, a load Nux, a different load Nux function from Nux three, and we run that. In the case of Nux two, we massage the options a little bit, but we'll also run the uh, load Nux function from from the, that Nux package. Um, and similarly with build Nux, we do something very similar. We just pull this build function in from either Nux three or Nux edge or Nux. Um, so that's what we do um, and why we do it. So we pull in these load Nux and build Nux functions, and we'll look at what they do in a moment. Then we set up this load function, uh, which is going to handle loading Nux and uh, basically starting that for us. But we put it in a function because we are also going to create a watcher so that if you change things like your Nux config file, then we'll restart Nux entirely. Because actually, if you change those options, it, you probably just can't hot reload those. If you add a new module, for example, we really should go through the whole startup procedure again. So no need to look into all the details here, but that's basically what we're doing. We're figuring out, do we need to restart Nuxt or not? Um, and then the first time we start Nuxt using that load function. So what do we do when we start Nuxt? Well, we'll print out some nice information to let you know what's happening. And then we run the load, load Nuxt function we clear the build directory, which is .nuxt by default. We await it to be ready. We write some types to the directory. We build nuxt itself. So we've got uh, a view application with an output file. Um, and then we can say, uh, set the, um, the server app, so the thing that's going to respond to incoming requests, to something that will respond to this built uh, nuxt uh, version. Well, let's dive into what each of those pieces uh, do. The first thing we do is run load Nux. And remember, this is coming from Kit, but Kit is just basically passing this on to load Nux in Nux3. Um, so if we pull open Nux3 here, we have this load Nux function. Um, and what load Nux function does is first loads the config. It makes some changes to that configuration uh, temporarily. Uh, we're going to move that into a nicer place. Uh, and then it returns it. That's that's basically it. So what load nuxt config does first is it uh, it runs another function called load config. This one's from another unjs package called c12, which is a configuration loader for any project, but we are particularly using it for nuxt. And that handles loading in the values in the nuxt config file and merging them with configuration you might get from elsewhere. You might not know, but it's possible to have a global Nuxt config or um, located in your either in your Nuxt project or in your home directory, for example, called .nuxtrc. And if you've used a global Nuxt module like Lucy's Hue, Nuxt Hue module, then um, you might have used uh, .nuxtrc. That's also where we would store things like your preferences for whether or not you're willing to uh, contribute to usage information on Nuxt. Um, but basically, we use this to load in uh, the Nuxt configuration file. That's also going to handle loading um, uh, .env files and things like that. So we pull in the configuration. And then we do the next thing, which is we use a package called untyped. It's yet another NJS package. And what that's going to do is handle merging the configuration you've provided with the defaults and then ensuring that everything is normalized, ready for Nuxt to operate off of it. So this uh, Nuxt config schema here is the default values of all of your Nuxt options. And that is currently set up to include Nuxt 2 uh, and Nuxt 3. So some of these options will be Nuxt 2 only, and they'll be marked with a version 2 uh, tag, and some will be Nuxt 3, and they'll be marked with a version 3 tag. Now in here, you'll see all kinds of different options. So um, some of those options are going to be just straight um, values. So log level for Vite is going to be worn. Some of them are a little bit more complex, though. You can pass this uh, magic dollar sign resolve function, which receives the value that you pass in your Nuxt config file if you set it yourself. Um, and this ability, the get function, to access some other part of the configuration. So here, Vite root is either going to be the value you provide or the value of source directory, uh, if that is set elsewhere in your config. Um, and that allows us to make quite a complex configuration file, um, which is references other parts of itself, um, and yet which is able to merge options that you provide with options that Nux provides itself uh, by default. 
that's untyped. And untyped also handles generating documentation for all of this. So all of the comments you see here, or the types even that are inlined, that gets extracted to create a type declaration file, which are the types that you see when you're actually uh, typing in your Nuxt config. Um, and it also produces the documentation that's on the Nuxt website for that configuration file. Uh, very cool. Um, and it should mean that you get really accurate information when you're looking at the docs or when you're doing, uh, when you're typing in your IDE. Because if we change this default value here, it's actually going to change in the documentation too, even if we forget to update it. So that's what we load, the default values from there, and then we merge that with a configuration you provide. We meld it all together with this magic apply defaults function from untyped. Uh, and then we return all of this Nuxt config um, as options. That options then gets uh, massaged a little and gets passed to the create Nuxt function. When Nuxt is created, it doesn't actually do a great deal. It's mostly an object which has some things like options, it has hooks, which is how Nuxt is so powerful. It's able to be adapted and changed. Different modules um, and even you yourself in your configuration can hook into different parts of the Nuxt lifecycle. Uh, and that, again, uses a package called Hookable, another UnJS package, and definitely one that can be used in many, many different projects, uh, completely independent of Nuxt. Uh, and when this ready function is called, we run something which is quite significant, this init Nuxt function. But basically that object, that Nuxt object is defined here. We also have a virtual file system, which is where we put a lot of uh, the, 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 the templates, for example, that users or modules add to their code. Init Nuxt, um, we'll look at in just a moment. Um, but basically this uh, function, this create Nuxt function gets called when you load Nuxt uh, and then it gets passed uh, back. Uh, and it will be initialized when we call ready. That's when init nuxt will be called. Um, so when we do run init nuxt, what happens is that we run uh, this function here. We'll add all the hooks that um, are registered by modules or by you to the hookable instance. Um, we'll set a nuxt context so you can run use nuxt and all of the nuxt kit uh, magic can work. Um, we'll initialize Nitro itself. Um, I'll look at that in a moment. And we set some hooks ourselves. So we um, add some plugins to Vite and Webpack. We install some modules. We register some components um, to make them globally available to you. Um, and uh, we then say, we're all done. We're all ready to go. Before we carry on, let's look at what happens when we initialize Nitro. So in it Nitro, at the moment, um, we have a Nitro legacy, which is in this repository and is what we'll look at today. But we're actually migrating to something called Nitro Pack, where we have extracted the Nuxt3 server and put it into a separate UnJS package that any framework uh, will be able to use. So definitely look at that um, in time. But for now, let's look at Nitro legacy. Nitro legacy basically pulls in the options that we have for Nitro. And it creates two different Nitro contexts, a dev context and a non-dev context, which is going to be our server. We set the virtual file system. We create the dev server. We combine all the Nitro hooks that we need access to with all the Nuxt hooks that it needs access to. It's a bit of a mess, uh, but it ensures that we can keep logic separated between Nitro uh, and Nuxt. We add some types. Uh, and we add some more things that we're going to do at different stages in the Nuxt lifecycle. For example, when we finish building our Vite server, then we're going to run a build on the Nitro server. And that Nitro server is then going to be able to handle requests with the Vite server that we've built. We'll look at that in a little bit uh, more in a moment. But basically, all of that gets run. Uh, and we come back to our uh, Nuxy dev command. We then build Nuxt. Now, that build Nuxt command, if you'll recall, is coming from kit. Um, kit is running a build command, which is coming from uh, Nuxt itself. So if we have a look at the build command from Nuxt, um, it's running this create app function, which basically assembles all the different files that are going to be part of your application. So all the different templates, some of them will be provided by Nuxt itself, like an entry file, um, some of the built-in Nuxt components, some built-in plugins, but some of them will actually be coming from you yourself. 
So it will scan all the files, all the plugins that exist in your application um, and pull those templates in. Some modules may be installing their own plugins too. By default, everything goes into this virtual file system. So it doesn't actually require interaction with uh, the real file system, which is often a performance um, bottleneck, but it's actually just purely in memory attached to your Nuxt object. Um, and so once we've done that and we've generated this app, um, created this context where all these files are available, uh, then what we're able to do is actually run a build step. In development mode, we're going to watch things so we can refresh it when uh, things change. But otherwise, we just run this bundle command directly, um, which is going to come from whichever builder you've selected. By default, Nuxt supports Vite and Webpack, but you could produce your own um, and just pass that as a builder option in Nuxt config. Um, and in the case of Vite, we're going to just pull in the Vite bundle, um, which is going to take some Vite configuration. So whatever is by default in your Nuxt config with these options added on top of it, because we couldn't do that in the schema, um, it's going to register a couple of hooks and then going to build feet itself. Once all of that has been done, we then are going to be able to handle incoming requests with Nitro. Nitro has its own dev preset, which is a little bit different and a lot more complex compared to what you'll be running in production. The uh, dev uh, preset for Nitro uh, pre has a, a, a pool of workers that handle incoming requests. These incoming requests uh, get handled by Nitro loading in the output of your Vite or Webpack build, um, firing re requests at it, uh, and then returning responses. Uh, and you can basically see that we've set that up to return various different things. We have a debugging endpoint. We have um, a direct endpoint that hits the build assets, um, which are things that are produced by um, the, the output of your, your build command. Um, there's other kinds of middleware that is directly handle, uh, directly attaching uh, Nitro to your server middleware or to the middleware of uh, Vite and Webpack itself, which will process incoming requests too. And all of that is wrapped up in a proxy, which uh, takes it directly to the, um, the file that is produced by Vite. It's quite complex uh, looking at how the uh, Vite handles the, the development server. Um, but basically, once all of that happens, that then gets assigned to the, uh, to the server app of Nuxt, which is then what processes the incoming requests in your Nuxty dev server. That is a million, million foot uh, overview of how all the different pieces of Nuxt work together. I hope it's helpful, at least in knowing where to start. If you're wanting to look and see something's going wrong, where would I look? Um, well, there are a lot of places where you might look, um, but they all work quite well together. Um, and I would love uh, to answer any questions you might have or give you any pointers if you're looking to explore the code base, um, either now or you should feel very free to uh, hit me up on Twitter or Discord if I can be of any help or service to you uh, later on.